Hi, welcome to this third lesson in using IntelliJ to effectively uh, work with your code and to effectively find and fix errors, to use version control, and to really maximize your experience as a developer using this IDE. In this lesson, we're going to focus on debugging and using the IntelliJ debugger. So debugging is a process by where you look for and fix errors within your code, and debugging broadly can mean um, a lot of things. So in, in a lot of our previous uh, assignments and exercises, we've logged messages um, to the screen to debug, and that's one way you can do it. However, using the debugger that's part of IntelliJ is going to be often a much more effective way to find the bugs within your code because it provides you with a much more rich experience and a lot more information about your code and your program as it's running. So we want to look at how to effectively use the debugger and some of the, the most used features of the IntelliJ debugger. So to motivate this example in this lesson, let's go to my gradebook program. And I'm going to go ahead and run this. I've been playing around with this, and I made some changes. And I just want to go ahead and test those changes and uh, see, see how things work. So I'm going to run my gradebook program. It's going to build, and then it'll um, open up the console here in the run window. And so I'm just going to interact with this. And remember that we can enter names for students until we hit enter. And then we can go ahead and enter the grades for those students. Okay, so my program ran. And, uh, you know, there was, no, there was no error here. I didn't get any kind of Java exception. But if I look at the output, it looks like I have a logic error in my code, right? These grades, three, four, and three and a half, those should average to three and a half, right? However, the average grade that I'm seeing on my screen is 1.16. So in playing around with this code, which we encourage you to do, in playing around with this code, I've introduced a bug. And this would be something we would call a logical bug because it's, um, you know, it isn't affecting um, the runtime status of my program. It's affecting the output and whether or not that output is correct. So we want to look at how can we diagnose and find this logical bug using the IntelliJ debugger. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that run pane. And so we need to look at our code and, and try to figure out where's the best place to start to look for this bug. So in particular, the bug seems to be with calculating the average of all of the grades, right? So that happens kind of near the bottom of the code. In the section where I'm printing the class roster, uh, I loop through all the students, I print out their names and grades, and in the process, and just afterward, I uh, go ahead and calculate the average grade for all the students, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and set what's called a breakpoint in the debugger so that I can stop the execution of my program when I get to um, the bottom of the code here and I can look and inspect and see what's going on and find my error. So to set a breakpoint, just go over to the left pane here, just right of the line numbers, and you wanna find um, a line of code that you want your, your code to stop executing at and go ahead and click there and you'll get a little red dot there. That's what's called a breakpoint. A breakpoint is just a place that IntelliJ will stop and pause the execution of your program at when you're running in debug mode, okay? So in order to run our program in debug mode, we need to uh, use a different run approach than we've done previously. So uh, we've talked about the different ways you can run programs. Um, we've often just used this run button either here or up here next to my main method or next to the class name. But this little bug uh, icon guy is what you will use to start your program in debug mode. If you don't start your program in debug mode, um, IntelliJ will not stop at the breakpoints. So let's go ahead and run our program in debug mode and try to figure out what's going on here. Okay, so um, here we're just gonna use the same data we did last time so we can kind of compare. All right, and so now I've hit this breakpoint. In other words, the execution of my program has gotten to the point where the breakpoint was set, and so IntelliJ has paused my program. And so there's a lot of information here that we can look at and we can poke around in order to figure out what's going on. Okay, so in particular, while I'm paused, I'm gonna be able to inspect the values of various variables in this pane. So down here, I'm gonna see a lot of different types of values. Uh, some of these are gonna be local variables. For, for example, args is an input parameter to the method that is uh, that's local. 
um, students and grades. These are all local. Um, if you have instance properties or other things like that, you'll be able to look at the various values within this pane. Now, uh, occasionally you'll have a need or desire to look at something that's not displayed within this pane, okay? So there's an easy way to add a value to this pane in order to sort of see, um, to see what it is as your program runs, and that's through this little um, add watch button. So a watch expression is just an expression that you want the debugger to keep track of as your program executes. So um, it can be pretty much anything anything at all. Uh, all. All it needs to do is to be something that you could actually evaluate simply to a value in code. So in this case, um, I don't know, we have the new student string here. You could do something simple like new student plus um, you know, some additional string here. Maybe not the most realistic example, but you can see that here then we do get the, um, the calculated value of that expression, okay? So you'll occasionally have the desire to look at something throughout your program while you're debugging it that isn't presented here. You can add it as a watch expression. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that one. Also know we can expand these different um, variables and see inside of them. So for example, we get the information here that students is an array list of size equals three. If I wanted to see what three things are actually in that array list, I can expand it. And I see that there's three things here. And each of these, I can see the inter parts of uh, the internal representation of each of these strings, right? So I see that the value of the string is actually um, internally, basically an array of characters. And so I see that all the characters that are making up that string there. And so you can really poke around and get a lot of details about the objects um, and, and values you're working with within your program in this variables pane. So um, we're gonna use this pane to kind of figure out what's going on here as we go through our program. Notice that a lot of the information is also displayed for you up here within your source code. So we've stopped the execution of our program, which is great, but really the power of the debugger is in controlling the step-by-step -step execution of the program. So there are a few basic operations that we have to allow us to do that. These buttons right here are going to help us control the flow of execution. The one on the far left is the one that you'll use most commonly. It's called step over. And that basically says um, step over the current line of code to go to the next line of code. So right now we're stopped at line 38. This basically means that line 38 has not quite executed yet. It's about to execute. If I hit the step over button, that line will go ahead and execute and the debugger will move down to the next executable line which in this case is line 39. Okay, and so if we go over to the console, we can actually see that now, before, we had not printed out this message, but we're actually seeing out the class roster message that was printed out on line 38 in the console. Okay, so we're on this line. Um, notice that we don't have a sum variable in our variables plane. That's because it hasn't been declared yet. It's declared right here on line 39. If I step over line 39, we'll see that sum then appears down there in the variables pane, okay? So the problem we're trying to find is why isn't the average being calculated correctly? So the average is calculated down on line 46. It's uh, the sum of all the grades divided by the number of students, right? So it's likely the case that either sum or the size is inaccurate when that's being calculated. So we wanna look at kind of those two, those two particular things. Um, since I wanna look at students.size, I could do this with a watch expression. Okay, so if I wanted to watch that there, um, I wouldn't absolutely need to do that, but it's just an example of how I can use the watch expression. These things, uh, these guys down here show me the size pretty excessively, but um, just one more way to do it. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and step through our code line by line and look at these values. Okay, so I just went through the first student and I have that sum is equal to three, right? If we look at the students, uh, the first student there is Chris and the grade for Chris down in the grades array or array list rather is three. So sum is three, that's great. That's exactly what I would hope it would be. Let's go ahead and step through the next student. In the second iteration of our loop, the student will be Jesse. And I see now that sum is equal to four, right? So Jesse's grade was four, 
And I should be adding these things together. I should have the sum of both of the first, the first grade and second grade in that array list, which should give me seven, but I'm actually getting four. So this is actually where our bug is. We've just noticed where our bug is by seeing that the values didn't increment in the way that we expected them to. And it turns out that the bug is because I'm setting sum equal to the new grade each time I loop through as opposed to adding it to the previous value of sum, right? So this is a, an, an example of the accumulator pattern or as you loop through a data structure, you're um, adding on to uh, a partial sum that you're accumulating as you go. Here, instead of actually adding on to the previous value, I'm just wiping out the old value and updating it to be the new one. So that's the bug in my code. Now that I found the bug, I'm gonna go ahead and kill the debugger by hitting the stop button. And I'm going to say that sum plus equals grades.geti. And uh, I expect that to fix my program. I'm just gonna do a test run here, I'm not going to do this in debug mode. I'm just going to do it in regular mode. Again, using the same data I did last time, just so I can be sure that I fixed the bug. Great. Now the average grade shows up as 3.5, which is what I expected. Okay, so there the debugger actually helped us figure out what was going on. One of the main powers of using the debugger is that uh, over say logging logging values to the console to try to find uh, things is every time you go to log a value to the console you're guessing at where the bug could be right you're taking a guess you have a hypothesis you you print out that value to test your hypothesis um, however if you're using the debugger you're able to look at all of the values within your program at once okay and you're able to control and inspect and dig deeper and sort of um, leave sort of the guesswork out of it to a large extent, and it's gonna let you get to the debug, uh, get, it, get to the bugs that are in your program a lot faster. Okay, so there are um, a couple more things I wanna show you here. One is how, a different way we can step through our code. I'm gonna remove this breakpoint. IntelliJ will save those breakpoints for you, so make sure you remove them um, when you're done with them. I'm gonna go over here to the methods package, and I have um, two classes here. This one just has a main method, this one has a static method that returns a message. So this is kind of a two class version of hello world that um, provides a message in a different language. And I'm going to set a breakpoint on line nine. And then I'm gonna start this program in debug mode. Okay, so um, I've stopped at line nine at the breakpoint, which is the first real line of my program. Notice down here, I still have that students.size there in my debugger. I'm gonna go ahead and whack that. We don't care about that anymore since we're looking at a different class. Um, but um, I'm, okay, so yeah, so I'm right here, line nine. And what I wanna look at is how I can go inside of a message call or a, a, a method call rather. In this case, I'm looking at message.getMessage, which is defined in this class over here. And suppose I wanna see what really happens inside of that method call, what's really going on, right? So if I was say receiving the wrong value of message back, I could then go step inside of that method using the step into button um, right here. So let's go ahead and do that. Now I've jumped from my main method over to the get message method and I'm at the first line of that method. And so here I can just inspect the code in the same way we've done so far. I can step over lines. Um, Etc. If at any point I want to leave this method and go back up to where I entered it, I can um, go ahead and use the step out button right here. And that'll take me back up to the line of code that I was at before I stepped into the method. Okay, so we can step over, we can step into, and we can step out of. Those are the most common um, step types and ways of interacting with the debugger. All right, and one more thing I want to show you is how to um, set what's called a conditional breakpoint. So let me kill the debugger here. Sometimes you'll only wanna set a breakpoint that, that gets stopped at in certain situations. So say for example, you have a loop that might run a lot of times, right? A thousand times, and you know that the problem is somewhere in one of those iterations of the loop, you just don't know which one. But you have some clue that will tell you that say, you know, I know that in this certain situation, is probably when the loop, uh, the bug in the loop happens, right? So you can set a conditional breakpoint to stop when certain conditions are met, okay? So um, let's see a good example of that. Let's just go to, well, let's go to a loop example. So, um, 
Great. So let's go down to say line 42. This is the line where I'm um, printing out the information about a student. I'm in the gradebook program. This is going to print out a student's name followed by their grade. Okay, and this is going to loop over all the students. Suppose there was some problem with one of the students' data, and I really wanted to get at that student's data at this line of code. Uh, I could go ahead and um, set a conditional breakpoint by right-clicking on the breakpoint. And here I can put a condition, and this should be a Boolean expression that is, uh, is, is going to determine when the debugger stops at this breakpoint. Okay, so say I want to stop when I know that I'm at the student Sally. So I can say students dot get i equals sally and actually here i should use dot equals when we're comparing strings to each other and other object types we should always use the dot equals method to compare them so i have a little visual indicator that i have a conditional breakpoint by the little question mark here let me go ahead and run this program in debug mode Okay, so now we see we've stopped at this breakpoint, and even though, um, even though we have three students in the students array list, notice that we've stopped at the student Sally. So let's go ahead and see that that's the case. We can see that actually the best way to see that is that we're at the i equals two iteration of this loop, right? Which is the third iteration. So we're actually looping through um, the last item in the array list. We can also set a watch expression and say students dot get i to see that we indeed have stopped now where we're at the student equal to Sally. So um, in other words, this loop went ahead and executed the first two times because the breakpoints condition was not met. The third time when the breakpoints condition was met is the iteration at which we stopped. So conditional breakpoints can be very useful as well. All right, so those are just some of the basic features of the debugger. I encourage you to get comfortable with it. The next time you have a bug in your program, think about where that bug might be coming from in your code and go ahead and dive into the bugger to help you find that error. Good luck and happy coding.